Hello and welcome to another video about the basics of Houdini height fields and today we'll be looking into layering multiple distortions and how to um, layer noises and distortions or what to think about when you're doing it. So um, yes, let's get started with the layering distortions. Now again, for just like the last distortion video, I start off with a couple of sinoid um, bumps and um, in this case, I apply two distortions, resulting in a look that looks like this. So why would you do this? Why would you, instead of just doing it in one node, um, use two different ones? Well, the reason I usually use for this is that it gives me more control. So here I apply a larger distortion. So the shapes are much larger. Um, I have a rather large amplitude. The element size is pretty big and the amount of octaves, which, um, as I t said in the previous videos, octaves basically mean how much noise gets applied. So if I increase this number, you can see that the noise applies itself over itself more. Um, but because I keep this low, we don't get as much detail as with a high fractal. And this is basically kind of a, a bass noise. And after that, I apply a lower element size and lower amplitude noise that has a higher uh, amount of octaves. And this allows me to very effectively and easily control the shapes that I get in the end and also control um, how the details are created. So if I for say, say, Okay, I like the details I'm having, but I don't like how the general shapes look. I can just go into the offset of the larger distortions and just move it along a bit. It seems that the Y axis doesn't work. So maybe I'm happy with what I have now, but now I don't like how the um, lower level distortions look, so the detail distortions. So then I go in here and I change those values around. And because of this, it allows you to just have more control over every step you take. And an added bonus is if, say, um, I don't like the way this curl distortion looks, I can always easily change it to simplex. And I'll have to up the amplitude a bit. And if I now throw this through a distortion, it already gives me a much different result, which you wouldn't be able to do with a single distortion node. Now, this also brings us to why you would layer distortions and noises. Um, it allows you to displace a um, detail in multiple directions. So as I mentioned previously, a height field noise will allow you to displace the height field in the Y axis or up and down and the distort will do the same, but in the X axis and the Z axis. So here I took a simple whirly noise, and the only thing I changed about this is I up the scale on one axis, which you can do here. So as you can see, it kind of stretches or squishes the noise. I um, up downed the element size a bit. I offset a bit until I found a pattern that I liked, which is something that I'd heavily recommend. Um, if you're going to be making something for just a single shot uh, and not something that will be used as a tool that has to be reused, feel free to use this offset to find the perfect spot for your noise. So for instance, we can say that we like this mountain detail here. So we just move it over a bit, make sure it's centered, even have some more in the background. And if we like that, we can just move on. Um, and also in this noise, I up the roughness. So usually you start off with about 0.5, but I made sure it is at one. So here you can see you got these very nice peak de details. And uh, peaks like this, they don't look very nice in my case. And that is because I have a rather low amount of resolution. So here you can see I have 512 by 512, but if I would up this to, for instance, 2048, which is four times the resolution on both axes, you already can see that it, it's looking a lot better. 
but for performance reasons I usually like to keep it at 512 because it still gives you a decent amount of detail and it allows you to work very fast. So then we add an erosion over it and looking at the erosion now you might think well um, I don't like it as much as the previous result so you can very easily also just move back again to the previous location. There we go. And so the distort will allow you to add a bit more uh, detail to this noise. So we can kind of play around with how the amplitude is, we can play with how much these substeps influence it, and as you can see, it starts to really get you that, that twirly look, so that, that curl look. So as we put this to about six, so that seems to be the cap, and we up the amplitude, you really get this, this curly look on your terrain. And if we up the element size, the features are going to be larger. And this could be the beginning of a alien terrain. Of course, you'd want to layer more noises and distortions onto this, but this is, can be a good start to what you're doing. So in the next video, I will be going over how to use the masks that Hidefields provide. So stay tuned for that and thank you very much for watching.